Andy McCluskey fr from OMD's MySpace. This is BBC Radio 6 Music. Come in. Enjoy my personal space. Let me show you around. Chris Hawkins. Hi, Chris. This is Andy McCluskey from the band Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. Welcome to my space. Currently sitting in the programming room. I have in my own house. Um, obviously, the music industry's been in hibernation, really, for the last 12 months, so we've all been stuck at home. We can't play gigs. I've actually been able to use the time to rediscover the creative power of boredom. I haven't been in this room very much for the previous two years because we've been out on the road so much, and when I did come in here, I didn't really feel the mood was upon me. It's a very different studio to the type of studio that we first started in over 40 years ago where we had big tape machines and mixing desks and every single instrument had to be wired up individually and you had to make notes on twiddling the knobs on the synth and try and remember how you'd programmed a particular sound if you wanted it back again. Never in my wildest dreams when Paul and I were cannibalising his auntie's radio in the back room of his mum's house on a Saturday to make weird noises from the circuit boards he got out of them, did I ever think that everything would be in a computer. Been working on some new tracks. It looks like there will be a new OMD album uh, next year, which I'm quite excited about, and um, working currently on a song called Kleptocracy. Yeah. Want to have a listen? Just a little teaser taster. In front of me, there's a giant poster, very narcissistic, of uh, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, live in the Berlin Tempo Drone from ten years ago. It seems that since we reformed, we've actually uh, got bigger than we used to be. Thank you, sir! I've just turned around and I can see a battered old little Korg micro preset synthesizer, which was the one that we bought from my mother's mail order catalogue back in 1978, the first synth we ever owned, actually. We, we played six gigs before we even owned a synth. We used to have to borrow them off friends, but uh, this trusty little beast, which makes horrible sounds, is still here and uh, it's been hauled out of a museum. It's now sitting in my programming room. So I'm going to get up and leave the room. I'm going to walk out into the hallway, and this is a very odd hallway. My house is festooned with paintings. Now, the hallway here, actually, right, I'm right outside my kids' bedrooms, and uh, there's pictures that they did when they were children at school, which uh, in stark contrast to the very dark northern industrial paintings that I collect these days. I've got paintings that are all basically post-Second World War, and they're very monochromatic. I'm looking at paintings by a guy from the pottery, he's called Morris Wade, who nobody's ever heard of, but I love his work because it's very monochromatic, and he never puts people in his paintings, which kind of soothes and suits me. They resonate with my melancholia. Which um, I tend to uh, put in my music as well. Cheerful pop songs with sad lyrics. Pick for your tape recorder. And I'm just going to walk into <laughs> the main gallery in my house, which is actually in my big bathroom. And there's even more black and white paintings. There's one here by Maurice Wade of uh, Stoke, the Victoria Hall in Hanley. And it reminds me of way back in the early 80s when we used to play there. We used to play all these small theatres and venues that... Uh, it was great to just see so much of the country. That our tours went on and on. We managed to uh, do 25 or 30 gigs around the country. We just seemed to always be on the road. In many ways, obviously, the bigger you get as a band, you tend to... Uh, you know, you have to play bigger venues and the audience seem to get further away and people love the intimacy of smaller venues, but I, I, you know what, I really do miss those, those small venues. Thank you all very much. You made it very enjoyable to play tonight, thank you. It's been a long, long time now. I can't wait to get back to playing live. And um, after I leave you and say goodbye, back here in my programming room, I'm going to get back to writing some more noise fire up the computer, get my headphones on, and thanks for sharing my space with me, Chris.